Thank you for joining us and welcome to T&D World's webinar, How Digitalization Can Enable, Optimize, Design Solutions, and Seamless Integration of DER, presented and sponsored by Siemens. My name is Gene Wolf. I'm a contributing editor and the technical writer for T&D World magazine. Before we begin, a few words about this webinar technology. This platform allows our audience to be more involved with the presentation, and more importantly, it allows you to watch this event the way you want to watch it. If at any time you experience difficulties with the audio or slides, simply press your F5 key to refresh your webinar console. If you require help during the webinar, please click the Help icon in the toolbar at the bottom of your console. Feel free to customize your webinar console. You can move windows around by dragging the title bar or resizing the windows by clicking in the lower right left right hand corner of any window. You can ask questions during the presentation of our presenters. Type your question into the Q&A box and click Submit. We will be answering as many questions as possible at the conclusion of today's seminar. Unanswered questions will be answered after the webinar for anyone who's concerned that theirs weren't answered. Note this presentation is being recorded and will be available on demand for one year on the TND World website. We appreciate your feedback, so please click the survey icon at the left of the toolbar and complete the form. And now I would like to introduce our speakers. Presenter number one is Tom Davis. Tan is a business development director at Bentley. He has over 25 years of experience in utility and government solutions business. Recently, he was responsible for global water and wastewater modeling sales team. He is currently leading the global business development activities for Bentley's open utility solution in coordination with Siemens Energy Management. Presenter number two is Munson Chadaher. Munson is a power system consultant at Siemens PTI. He has been heavily involved in power system studies, including distribution system modeling and analysis, microgrid analysis, and DER interconnection studies. Most recently, he has participated in microgrid analysis. He is an instructor at Siemens Power Academy North America. Presenter number two is Sven Kosh. Sven is a solutions architect project manager for Siemens PTI. He has about 20 years of experience in software development and almost 10 years in integrating power simulation software within customer environments all over the world. He is responsible for integration solutions based on Siemens PTI PSS portfolio. Presenter number four is Alfredo Contreras. Alfredo is a product manager at Bentley. He has been a consultant working in the power industry with several large electric and gas utilities and municipalities for 30 years. He has developed software solutions in GIS, CAD, and is a product manager for Bentley Open Utilities brand of products at Bentley Systems. I'm going to hand the floor over to Tom and for his first presentation. Tom, the floor is yours. Thank you, gentlemen. Now for the... So thank you, uh, Gene, and thank you for the introduction. So welcome, everybody, to the webinar. Before we start, I'd like to brief, briefly review the agenda for today's webinar with you. In this webinar, we will address the why, the what, and the how of integration of distributed energy resources in your networks. I will start with a quick industry overview and share why this is becoming more and more relevant for distribution organizations and how Siemens and Bentley are teaming up to address this. The next speaker after me, Masoom, will address interconnection practices, followed by Sven with an explanation on how network analysis supports DER integration. And then finally, Alfredo will conclude the webinar explaining on how the integration of GIS and engineering with power systems planning can help you address the challenges due to increased DER connections. So my name is Tom de Vries. I'm the Global Business Development Director for Utilities in Bentley. 
But enough of introductions uh, now. Let's review how digitalization transforms the industry. Utilities are facing massive changes. And these changes affect all aspects of your business, from, pl from planning to operations. Once as an industry characterized as technology risk averse, utilities are shifting to more agile approaches. The main trends in the energy world can be categorized under electrification, decentralization, and digitalization. And all of these trends have an impact on both the business side and on the infrastructure side. All of these trends affect the networks from planning through design, construction, and operations and maintenance. For over a century, our power flow was unidirectional. While generation sources changed over the time, from, from wood to coal, oil, gas, nuclear, the transmission and distribution networks essentially remained the same. But with the explosive growth of distributed energy resources, the impact on the distribution network is increasing. Wind farms, solar farms, community solar, private solar, electrical vehicles, etc., they all force us to accommodate bidirectional power flows. So the big question here is how do we maintain reliability and resilience when, with these changes happening? And when I talk to utilities around the world, there is at least one thing they all agree upon. It is happening everywhere. We know that much of Europe has led the pace for years. But what about the rest of the world? We quite often forget about Australia. But they have areas, specifically in Queensland, where residential power, uh, solar penetration is sometimes over 40%. China and India are picking up, and in the US, the train has left the station too. Last year, over 75% of new generation capacity worldwide was renewable, and much of it was distributed. In fact, if we include the decommissioning of old power plants and closing of nuclear facilities into account, the net new renewable share was over 90% globally. About a year ago, NERC released a report on distributed energy resources addressing connection modeling and reliability considerations. In an extensive study, the main conclusion of the report is that the unique characteristics of distributed energy resources require separate and individual modeling throughout. So here's where for many of us the problem starts. What does this mean for me? What does this mean for my department, my current workflows? How do I include this in my day-to-day -day work? Generally spoken, we know that our networks have capacity to host the ERs. At the same time, we're not always sure what the exact capacity is. How does this, how does this influence reliability at the edge of my network? Again, we have a feeling that we lack the capacity quite often the time, and in many cases the tools to create a network model for each and every DER request we get. And that leads me to conclude that we more need to discuss the when and the how, and not so much the if. As we go through this one hour webinar in the United States alone, over 75 solar installations are put in operation. All of us will reach the point where we need to get a better and more calculated insight in the influence of DER at the grid edge. So now I'd like to invite you to share your best indication when you believe your organization should start modeling the characteristics of individual DER connections. The poll is anonymous. So feel free to express what you believe should be the best for your organization and your customers. We'll give it a few more seconds. And if you can't decide between this year or next year, I suggest select this year, since we all know that delays are not uncommon. 
Be reminded that while in some areas the growth rate has dropped, this is still a growing business and is forecasted to remain growing into the foreseeable future. Another fact to take into consideration is that knowledge about the characteristics of individual DER connections becomes more critical when the total amount, and thus the overall influence, is growing. We'll be closing the poll now in a couple of seconds, so please vote now if you haven't already. So the poll is now closed, and while we are counting the results of the poll, I want to take the opportunity to introduce the next speaker and elaborate a little bit on the Siemens Bentley strategic initiatives that address the challenges we are discussing today. Siemens and Bentley have joined forces to develop and deliver standard commercial off-the-shelf solutions to address decision-making, analysis, and engineering of distributed energy resources in today's grid. These solutions enable utility organizations like yours to fully incorporate distributed energy resources into the grid while maintaining reliability and ensuring resilience without disrupting your current processes or workflows. And this is the result of a broader strategic alliance between Siemens and Bentley. And that spans multiple disciplines. It addresses industries like mobility, energy management, process and manufacturing, and smart cities. So before I hand over to the next speaker, Masoom, who will address DER interconnection practices, let's take a quick look at the results of the poll. So many of you already do this, and I see a big percentage is looking to uh, start going in 2018. Uh, so this is a, a, a pretty accurate, uh, let's say, uh, representation of what's going on in today's, uh, today's market. And I'm glad that we are addressing a topic that is of interest uh, of everybody here. So let's now, let's now look, take a closer look into DER interconnection practices with Masoom. Masoom, the floor is yours. Thanks, John. Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Masoom Chaudhary. I'm a power system consultant at Siemens PDI. Uh, since joining at Siemens PDI, I am involved in uh, interconnection studies, with transmission planning, distribution planning, uh, microgrid feasibility studies, short circuit, and production coordination studies. So today, I would like to talk about uh, distributed energy resource interconnection practices, some trends, challenges, and some utility activities. Uh, this slide is showing an example of DR integration in Germany, uh, where you can see that uh, as more wind and PV capacity is more than the peak load, as the distributed energy research is growing so fast, we have uh, more, genera more generation than the load, then we can see uh, the, the capacity is more than the peak load, and 65 gigawatt of wind and PV uh, approximately connected to the low voltage and the medium voltage system. On the right, uh, showing a picture of power generation and consumption in April 2017. And it, as you can see on the bottom, 85% uh, of renewable energy source uh, is, is providing this share. And uh, it's providing uh, some challenges, uh, like grid operator challenges, uh, voltage and frequency stability issues. Uh, Uh, this slide is referring uh, some distribution network expansion uh, due to the penetration of distributed energy resources. Uh, as you know all that uh, if we have more uh, PV interconnection to the grid uh, in the noon time where our residential customer have a low peak uh, and we have a back feed uh, to the network, in that case, uh, if we have more than PV than the transformer capacity, then in that case, uh, we can see we need some investment. So this slide is referring that uh, the investment required until 2030, around 11.4 billion euros uh, uh, investment needs to be made uh, for distribution network expansion due to the DER. Distributed energy resources uh, provide a lot of advantage. Uh, however, for integration, we can see um, uh, there are a lot of cha challenges. Uh, 
So the challenges are uh, uh, thermal limit violation, uh, voltage limit violation. Uh, there is some change in voltage magnitude, as you know that uh, the rapid voltage fluctuation of the PV uh, caused some flickering issues, uh, some short circuit limitations, uh, transformer reverse feed, and some protection coordination issues uh, due to the DER. So uh, here is some poll questions. What are the challenges you are facing due to the DER interconnection to your system? Uh, you can choose uh, multiple uh, options as you want to. So please feel free to select your options. Uh, the op options are voltage, uh, thermal protection, flickering, and other issues. Uh, So while we are waiting for the answers, uh, I move on to the next slide. So distributed generation interconnection standard. Uh, some standards are uh, California Rule 21, uh, some FERC rules, IEEE standard 1547. So IEEE 1547 uh, first uh, it was focused mostly on distribution network. Later, it's taking all of the capabilities of what are the impact on the bulk, uh, bulk planning and some control features. So it plays under major revision right now and it's nearly ready for the adoption. So what are the utilities are doing uh, based on these distribution uh, generation interconnection practices? Uh, different states have different policies of interconnection. Uh, some are uh, following uh, California, for instance, uh, is following uh, Rule 21. Uh, and then uh, some of are following the FERC Order 792 for a small, large, and medium scale uh, DG interconnection. Some of the utilities are uh, uh, updating their website with a hosting capacity map. So the advantage of this hosting capacity map is that uh, distributed generation providers or uh, third party can see that how much uh, DER can be interconnected uh, you know, to the specific feeder of the network of the specific utility uh, territory and uh, they update the map with the blue, green, and red colors, was giving a picture how much DER can be interconnected. So as we expected, uh, we uh, have the results poll questions. The first, uh, the majority of the people are uh, worried about uh, seeing the interconnection is the voltage, and the second is the protection, um, third, 25% uh, is a thermal, and 22.5% uh, is a flickering issues. So thanks for your particip participation. Uh, this is a really uh, a good feedback from you. So this slide, uh, this uh, is an important message for this DG interconnection screening process. Uh, what if uh, uh, utility is uh, getting a thousand requests um, for a month and the, uh, the utility need to approve the request. So some of the utilities are following California Rule 21, for instance, in the California. Uh, some in Hawaii, they're uh, following the screening process of uh, like a 14H, some FERC first trying sc screening process. So what is this screening process actually? Uh, if you connected a DER on your system, uh, it gives you a quick, um, a quick result that whether your DER is uh, accepted or not to be connected in your network. Uh, if it's uh, most likely, if it's very small rooftop PV, if two kilowatt or five kilowatt PV, most likely uh, if we, uh, we are not aware of that it is going to be impacted in the network. However, uh, it's going to a screening process. On the right, you can see uh, there's a flowchart. Uh, this flowchart is like uh, uh, with uh, some algorithm. If there is check some voltage criteria, uh, flickering, protection, and quick uh, give you a feedback that, okay, this DER is past the screening process. Now you can hook up the DER in the system. However, if the DER is not accepted, then it's going to further depth of supplemental review, which you need to do further consulting studies. So uh, most of the cases, utility and other solution provider, they have uh, scripting tools which can do the analysis with the script, with the, follow the screen process, for example, California Rule 21. 
And the advantage of this screening process is that it's reduced the time of the consulting work and also allow quick screening whether the DG needs to go further uh, supplementary review or not. So here is a demonstration case. Uh, what if, if your DG uh, is not accepted for a quick screening process and you need to have further uh, depth review? For demonstration purposes, uh, we have selected here an IEEE, IEEE 34 note test feeders uh, where you can see that we added a distributed PV all the way to the feeder uh, and we have selected different kind of load profiles uh, for example, residential customers, um, uh, industrial customers, probably I'm seeing some. And we have selected a clear sky PV profile, and we are ready to run our analysis. So in this case, we run the analysis for hour by hour uh, uh, analysis. Now, uh, on the figure left, you can see we run the analysis uh, for peak day conditions, and on the right, we have run the uh, similar network for the light day conditions, uh, and we, uh, sorry, probably we are, uh, the slide is moving with the timing, I'm just going back to the slide. Okay, so we are on the slide where I'm explaining that I'm, I run the simulation for the peak load condition and the light load condition. On the left, you can see on the peak load conditions, we added the PV from all the way uh, all the way from 0% to 100% PV, and we want to see what is happening on the substation uh, uh, power supply per phase. And uh, as you can see on the peak load condition, uh, we have, on the peak load conditions, uh, we have uh, some reverse power flow around 80% or 90%. However, on the light load conditions, we have seen much more reverse power flow as we penetrate more than 70% of the PV. So here is a slide of uh, showing the voltage and thermal results as well. Uh, on the left is showing the peak layer condition, and on the right is the light load condition. Uh, on the peak load condition, we can see some low voltage problem. And on the right side, I can see there is no issue on the peak load, the light load condition. And also uh, on the thermal, as you can see, as we added more PV, we don't see any thermal violation in the network. Also, uh, this is another uh, important concern. Uh, most of the utilities have their uh, settings over, for example, these overcurrent settings, uh, fuse and recloser setup uh, without the DER. And, and if we have uh, the DER interconnection, we need to pay attention that whether this inter uh, relay and fuse coordination is interrupting or not. So these are the all things we need to pay attention. And uh, having said that, I would like to invite our next speakers then uh, to continue the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Masoom. So, uh, yeah, um, Masoom as a consultant and the network planners, they are doing the network analysis and they use software for that. And I just want to take the, the chance um, to talk with you about how network analysis software practically can support DR integration and, and show you some examples about this. Trying to to change the slides. Okay, that worked. <laughs> so, how can network analysis support the DER integration? So, network analysis practically helps you to investigate the effects of DER integration, and also will help us to define the measures to operate a network reliable and cost efficient. So, for example, this is also something Masum already showed in his slides. Time series load flow calculation can help you to get an idea of the resource loading, and it will help you to detect critical operation states over a certain period of time. We can do this by using stored profiles, or even better, when we have meter data, for the time steps where we want to analyze. So once we have an idea of how our network will operate with the expected DER integration, the network al analysis software allows us to simulate the effects of the measures you know, just like um, to, to, it will help you to optimize equipment, um, to simulate uh, the effects of battery storages, 
or even um, um, it will allow you to simulate demand response strategies, just to name a couple. So beyond that, Siemens PTI also developed a couple of uh, DER-related workflows to help you with um, performing connection verification studies. So these are exactly the screening processes um, Masoom mentioned. Or to analyze the DER integration capability. This is something similar, but it's doing that for a whole network. Or to perform protection security assessments. And these last three, I want to explain a little bit in more detail in the next uh, following two slides. So in general, we can say the benefits of, of using software to analyze the effects of DER will help you to optimize your investment planning because you really see what's going on in your network. So you can drive it closer to the physical limits uh, where it's possible and postpone the investment while keeping the network reliable. So let, let's have a look at these, uh, at these workflows I just mentioned. So in order to safely operate your network, it would be good to manage changes in your network by continuously monitoring the effects of their growth, DR growth. Special networks analyzer workflows will help you here. For example, this DR connection verification. This will verify if each DR connection is compliant with the grid code requirements. It will connect the requested DR installation to the network and perform a series of calculations like load flow for the fast and slow voltage changes, short circuit, and harmonics, and compare the results with the requirements of the selected grid code. So automatically, you will get the reporting out of that. And that is a, is a very qualitative and, and good reporting that directly can be submitted to your regulator if needed, or you can use it for your own um, administration. So that means it supports the complete assessment workflow the, the complete screening process, if you like, with a couple of clicks. <clears throat> so, and the second point is the integrated capacity analysis, ICA. So, instead of verifying each connection individually, it's also possible to analyze the DR hosting capacity of an entire network. In this scenario, for example, for every possible connection point, it will be checked how much DR power can be connected and that in respect of the user defined constraints for thermal loading, voltage changes, and protection. So these analyzes could be done on a daily basis, and the results could be published um, even on the internet, so that your stakeholders have the possibility to check what DER power they can connect on a daily basis. So the benefits, um, this really helps you to maximize DR integration while maintaining a reliable operation. And you will automatically create qualitative documentation of your assessments. Another benefit, this analysis, this type of analysis can be executed by non-technical staff. In case of issues, it can be uh, passed on to the network analysis guys, to the planning guys. And they can have a closer look. So uh, another workflow example is this uh, preventive security assessment. So Masoom already mentioned, and I also saw that in the poll question, that um, uh, the DR integration can affect your protection security. So how can you make sure that your protection is effective while the conditions in the network change rapidly? So the trend in the industry is now to make use of network analysis software to perform preventive security assessments. So here, various protection simulations are performed for all possible faults in your network. This will deliver all the weak spots in your protection scheme, and you can instantly use the protection coordination functionality to determine measures in order to improve the situation. As you can see here in the picture on the right side, you will really get a matrix, and this will show you exactly where in the network you have to do something. So this helps you to improve the reliability and it even helps you then, of course, to prevent blackouts. Again, these assessments, this is the same for the other ones, these workflows can be performed frequently and also by non-technical staff. In case of issues, of course, this can be passed on to the protection specialist, and they can really focus then on the, on the serious cases and uh, you know, define there also the required measures using the protection coordination software. 
But now I was talking a lot about network analysis software. So uh, this can only be done if you have an appropriate network model. So how do we get these models? So uh, we can do this manually, but this can take a lot of time, especially when your models are big. We can even, uh, some customers talked about manual model creation that takes them about a year if they have a large network. So today, these models are often created from external systems like GIS, asset management, SCADA, etc. However, often the GIS plays a, a crucial central role in this since it is containing useful data like network diagrams, topology information uh, on the used equipment. In the example picture, the GIS serves as a provider for the network data, which is exported to the network analysis. So ideally, it is possible to keep the network model in sync with its source by means of incremental updates. So um, that means that the incremental updates that will allow you to make additions in analysis models without losing them when you get a new GIS export. So automatic model creation saves a lot of time. We can create models within minutes, depending on the size, and by a, a couple of mouse clicks. But it, we get a much better currency and consistent network, and we have avoid data maintenance overall several locations in separate locations. So that's all nice, but there are also challenges. So uh, as you can see in the right picture, uh, it's often the case that the data in the GS system is not sufficient for building up network models that can be used for calculations and simulations. So often we need to fetch data from various systems like SCADA, ERP, asset management, billing, etc. So in order to do that, it would be optimal to have a uniform ID system across these systems. And as that not is uh, available, we need an ID mapping between the systems, uh, and this needs to, maintain, uh, to be maintained, of course. So this is often not the case since these systems are uh, mostly modeled individually, so they don't know of each other. Yeah. So, uh, um, but okay, this is sometimes also fine, but uh, we find a lot of cases where we have to make a mapping. So another challenge is that the systems are often highly customized, and this makes it uh, difficult to use standard interfaces to transfer the data. So these challenges are often solved in a customized integration platform. Uh, but be aware that automatic model creation can only uh, yeah, be that good as the data that is stored in your organization. So that means if you have bad data in your systems, you will get bad network models. So that being said, you know, if you use automatic model creation, it can be uh, that you have to do some homework before so that your data is, uh, is all set to do this. So, and uh, the last slides, and this is a little bit of a sneak peek on Alfredo, so I want to keep it short there. Um, uh, the next trend is practically that we don't bring the, the network data to the network analysis software, but, but we bring the network analysis uh, software to the network data. So um, in this uh, little example, as you see on the, on the picture on the right side, the GIS picture is equipped with a network analysis engine. And this is exactly what the Bentley guys are doing right now. So now you can run the network analysis functions directly within the GIS. You will have the results there. And um, uh, yeah, uh, this can be operated directly from there. So uh, this is often used for, for um, quick assessments and validations within the GIS system. If you want to do more advanced studies, of course, you will go to the, to the network analysis. But uh, yeah, for, for quick assessments, it really enhances the GIS functionality. It's easy accessible. Every GIS user can use it. And uh, you really can also, and that is a nice thing, you really can tailor workflows in the GIS that include network analysis. And, uh, and generally, these kind of solutions are possible for all kinds of systems. So this can also be done for SCADA system and its asset management systems, as long as there is enough network analyzer data available in that system. And in the picture, you also see that we use uh, several systems um, uh, or that we connect the GIS are is connected to several external systems to build up a proper network model. But uh, Alfredo will tell you much more about that and show you a very nice example of how Bentley is doing this now. So I hand over to Alfredo. 
thank you. Thank you, Sven. Uh, hello, I'm Alfredo Contreras. I'm a product manager at Bentley Systems uh, for energy infrastructure applications. Um, first, uh, let me uh, start with why integrate GIS with power systems analysis? Uh, Sven uh, mentioned uh, actually several important reasons, but uh, let me add just a few more. First, uh, power systems analysis within GIS is better tailored for a wider audience. And I believe you'll understand my claim in the next few slides. In addition, with GIS, you get better spatial and better non-spatial queries reporting. Uh, you can also leverage the GIS to manage your alternative scenarios. In other words, uh, your plan, such as your five-year plan, 10-year plan, and so forth. Uh, you can also uh, better comply with regulatory requirements by completing tasks faster with better data and with better results. And last but not least, you take an important step toward digitalization of your grid, better design, simulate, monitor, optimize, and service your energy infrastructure. Another benefit that can be gained from integrating GIS uh, systems with uh, power systems planning is better workflows. In some organizations, uh, design and engineering are external processes, while in other, other uh, firms, uh, Designs begin with engineering, and from engineering moves on to design detailing. In such a workflow, engineers always review expansions. The have done well, and issues are prevented. Uh, this diagram illustrates uh, a workflow where uh, uh, an organization is a bit more siloed in which case each design starts with a designer receiving a request for a design. The design plan can be as simple as a, adding a new home to the, to the uh, network or as complex as adding apartment buildings. Uh, regardless, the designer creates the layout, construction details, the cost estimates, and so on. The completed design may go on to a senior designer or to a manager for approval, and it may finally go on to procurement and to construction. Months, perhaps years after construction, unforeseen growth patterns may cause reliability issues to appear in which case engineers may become involved and a study is initiated to identify the cause and find remediations. The diagram on the right illustrates a workflow where designers can easily and consistently identify potential operating issues with their proposed energy infrastructures and with existing energy infrastructures. In that case, the designer has the tools properly size his design and to notify planning engineers about the possible operating issues in existing infrastructure. The engineer can review the design plan and the existing network and recommend changes to the design or make recommendations to operations to prepare them for the extension of the network. To better understand a proactive or preemptive workflow, let's consider a study, a case study for DER impact analysis. A consumer hires an electrical contractor to add rooftop solar PV to her home. The contractor in turn does his due diligence to size the system and submits a grid connection request to the local electric utility. The utility must in turn assess the impact of the connection and depending on ro local regulations may be required to prepare, manage, and report their due diligence to comply with those regulations. Due to the complexity of the assessment, 
an engineer is typically required to make the assessment using planning software. And the planning software can only do as good a job as the data that is used for the analysis. And of course, the assessment takes valuable time away from other planning tasks. So, uh, what if you could leverage GIS using a common data environment for analysis? And what if a non-engineer could reliably perform the initial assessment? And what if the engineer only becomes involved when potential issues are identified by the non-engineer? And uh, what if you take it a step further and, and say, what if it were a cloud service available anytime, anywhere, and from any platform. Given all that, could you streamline the DER impact assessment workflow? Such a solution can streamline DER impact assessments by allowing a non-engineer to deem a requested interconnection as compliant or non-compliant based on reliability and economics. In this case, economics meaning that the interconnection will or will not require costly upgrades to the existing grid. The non-engineer only needs to interpret simple visual cues in the solution that indicate non-compliance or compliance. And if it is non-compliant, the, the, a request can be made for planners to review the request for, uh, further. When a request is routed to an engineer, the engineer can begin at the desktop where the non-engineer left off in the cloud using the same source data and the same configuration. There's no need to migrate data or to configure an environment for the study. Ease of use and better data combine to save time and save money. Now let's very briefly consider another case study for an expansion of the existing grid. In this case, a developer proposes to build a smart community where all homes have rooftop TV solar. A design request is submitted to the utility for, the, for, this, for this community. The job requires designing the proposed community and assessing the impact of the DERs. In addition, the community will interconnect with the grid and therefore it requires assessing that existing infrastructures continue to comply with established reliability standards. <clears throat> with the right tool sets for the designer and the engineer, both the designer and the engineer can benefit from a solution that integrates GIS and analysis regardless of where the design plan originates. With the right tool set, the user can precision design the community, size equipment, cost estimate it, and check DER hosting capacity for the entire community. If the solution discovers a potential operating problem with existing infrastructures, the planning engineer can be notified that a study is required. In every case, however, every design plan gets an engineering review by the solution based on the most current information. The most current information includes existing infrastructure information, infrastructure information in a, in a proposed but approved state, and even those in a construction state. The right tool set it's a solution that can combine all the tools that both designers and planners require for the design and planning process. Tools that include CAD, GIS, work management, including integration to systems such as SAP, and engineering analysis. Such a solution not only streamlines the design and engineering process, it ensures, it ensures that designs comply with reliability standards and minimize economic impact, again, saving time and money.
Everyone in this call will receive an email after this webinar inviting you to a follow-up webinar. In that webinar, we will demonstrate some of the capabilities of the products Siemens and Bentley are jointly developing. The webinar will occur on April 3rd, 2018 at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And finally, feel free to contact any of the presenters via their email. Thank you. Well, thank you. Now we have time for some questions. And uh, the first one is, okay, the cost of DER connection assessment. They're, they're one, wanting to know uh, an approximate cost for this. Uh, who on our panel would like to take that one? Yeah, I can I can take that, uh, Gene. This is Tom uh, uh, speaking. Um, so, so the cost. Um, uh, it, well, there's not a single cost here that that is that is let's say representative to to uh, to communicate because it depends uh, quite often uh, on on the current uh, architecture and situation at the at the customer side. But rest assured here that of course in automating these processes, we are taking away uh, a lot of the required manual labor um, um, and information uh, and automating the information, streamlining the information flow, which reduces the, uh, 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 the time and the effort dramatically. So in, in general, you could say that uh, a cost savings of, of 70, 80% on the process are very likely to achieve. I, I hope that gives an indication of uh, uh, the cost and the benefits associated with uh, uh, with, with the uh, the integrated approach. Would anybody else like to add to that? Okay, uh, this is actually a two-part question. Uh, our questioner also asks, have you looked at integrating a blockchain ledger for payment settlements? Don? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll continue with that one. Yeah, uh, it, that's, that's an interesting uh, uh, thought. Uh, emerging technology uh, forward-looking statement here. Um, as our first focus here is uh, on reliability and resilience of the network and improving the process of uh, connecting DERs, uh, of course, future uh, developments uh, uh, towards new and, and emerging technologies like blockchain are always possible. Currently, uh, that is, uh, is not included. Okay, any follow-up? Our next question then is which software are you using to run distributed software, solar PV? Sorry about that. Who would like to address that one? Uh, hi, this is Masum. I can take the questions. For, uh, there's a, a, we, for our analysis, we use our PSS suite a software called PSS Syncal to run the uh, distributed solar PV analysis. Any follow up? Okay. Yeah, I, I would like question. to add that. Uh, uh, this is Alfredo, by the way. Uh, I would like to add that uh, uh, Open Utilities, that essentially the software that uh, Bentley is working on with Siemens uh, incorporates the technology that Masum is is uh, talking about. So actually, both uh, solutions have the same technology. Okay. Well, soon, I think this is another one that would be uh, in your area. In DER modeling, does Siemens include PV coupling with batteries and energy storage systems? Uh, yes, we have a, a storage and PV model where we run mostly, uh, I have run uh, presently for the steady state analysis. So in that case, yes, we have the PV and storage uh, model in our case. Okay. Anybody else like to add to that? Okay. The next question, who will be the most beneficiary of a DER system? 
is the ordinary citizen or the utility company the, the best beneficiary, and how? Who would like okay. to? Okay, I can I can take that, uh, Gene, from uh, from here. Um, I assume that the question is related uh, to the DER uh, in inclusion and, and, and uh, uh, software solutions that we are presenting and addressing here uh, today. And in that case, I believe both uh, citizens or the community in general and the utility company benefit uh, uh, from that. Uh, the utility company, because they can streamline their processes uh, provide a quicker feedback and a more precise feedback to uh, individual DER uh, connection situations or requests, uh, as well as making sure that they remain and, and, and keep their grid reliable and resilient. And as a result, uh, citizens will be more pleased with the response uh, at times uh, or reduced response times from utility companies. Um, and that way, I think both uh, both benefit from it. Would anybody else like to add anything? Okay, our next question. <clears throat> this sounds interesting. Do I need to replace any of my current systems, or does it work? I'm assuming they're saying DER with the network management solutions and GIS. Alfredo? Uh, it is intended to integrate with existing systems. Yes. You, you wouldn't replace your GIS or your asset management or any of those systems. I, I apologize if people were having a hard time hearing me. I, I'm recovering from a cold. So I, I don't know if I sound, sound very clear. Would anybody else like to uh, add anything to that? Okay, our next question is, we have a lot of new DER installations and they seem to operate well. How does this solution help me? Who would like to address that? Seven? So yeah, I'm, I'm I, guess I, try, I can try. So yeah, do you hear me? So if uh, if everything is uh, is 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 going well at the moment, that's just fine. Uh, but how how do you make sure that this also stays in the future as the system is is still expanding? And um, and this is exactly what our solution is uh, is doing. This our solutions that we um, practically uh, described here will help you. To really have an idea what is going on, and really to in, um, you know to um, to see the the points where it is getting critical critical operation points, and um, and and then this solution can help you because you are in front of it. You know you will see there will be a problem at a certain point, or there is building up a problem, and you can do something about it before it's before it's too late and you have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, work as a firefighter. Yeah, so uh, I, this is Alfredo. The, uh, maybe the assumption is that uh, they're not currently uh, assessing whether whether DR is okay or not uh, because it works. However, uh, do they have any uh, regulatory requirements that now, so they have to maintain records that they have done their due diligence. If if they do, then uh, you know this is I think where it can, it can help as well. Anybody else like to add? Okay, another question. <clears throat> Any dynamic analysis and our harmonic analysis capabilities in the software? And is the inverter modeling also available? Uh, Masoon, would you like to try that? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, we have the dynamic features of this uh, software and also the harmonic analysis capabilities. Uh, I'm not uh, aware of the inverter modeling uh, completely because I haven't uh, used that features. Maybe, Van, do you have any uh, follow-up on that?
Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this is exactly what Masum is saying. So um, the, the the PSS suite, and uh, now we are talking a lot about Syncall, has also the dynamic analysis, and also the harmonic analysis. The harmonic analysis is even part of the uh, verification of the connection uh, conditions. And uh, yeah, inverter modeling uh, is also done by uh, by uh, yeah. Uh, in the tool, and there are also some uh, some special inverter models that you can uh, can use in our in our software for the for the various analysis um, functions that we offer. Okay. <clears throat> this question is: Can we only use the Siemens PSS and open utilities in the cloud? Yeah, Gene, I, 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 uh, I would like to answer that. Okay. Uh, and maybe combine it with the next one uh, uh, that says, who should we contact for pricing and more detailed information regarding the software? Great. Um, for for both, I would say any of the four of us and, and the, the email addresses that uh, that you see on the screen uh, can be uh, can be used for more information. To, to be more direct on the answer on the on the cloud and the cloud capabilities. So the solutions that uh, are currently available uh, from, from Siemens and Bentley and combined Siemens and Bentley cover both cloud and on-premise deployments. Uh, so that means you you have a uh, uh, you have the flexibility to use the both uh, or both of both worlds. Um, and uh, if we talk about cloud solutions, that means that you can that you can deploy them in a a, a public cloud like on Azure or, or or so and so forth. But you can also deploy them in your private cloud on premise. I hope that doesn't. Okay, and uh, yeah. Hmm. I think that that is a good answer, but I just want to add that uh, yeah, open utilities and PSS uh, are also you know normal tools that you you can use them in the cloud, but it is not uh, on-premise cloud and and uh, the the cloud outside of your organization. But you can also still install these um, 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 this software on your PC or in your on your servers. So it is also normal. Uh, normal uh, classical deployments are also still available, so we go both ways with both uh, software packages. Great. Uh, another question: Does this system address solar and wind farms as well? Sven, would you like to address yes, that? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, sure. So, uh, yeah, you can also model uh, wind farms and uh, and and uh, uh, PV, larger PV installations. Yeah, that's that's no issue. There, the software is made for. Anybody else like to add to that? Okay. One, another question. I know Bentley for its micro station CAD product and its engineering information management solutions uh, project-wise. Is there a new solution uh, from Bentley for this? Uh, y yes, uh, there, this is Alfredo. Uh, there are three new uh, products that uh, Bentley is introducing uh, based on Siemens technology. Uh, First one is Open Utilities Analysis, which is uh, uh, a tool mostly for engineers. And there's Open Utilities uh, Design Optioneering, which is a tool for designers and planners. And uh, finally, there's uh, DR Optioneering, which is the cloud tool for assessing uh, DR uh, DR individually, uh, you know, like uh, someone calls uh, uh, for a request uh, for solar rooftop PV. Uh, that that would be the third product. 
Well, I'm afraid we've run out of time. But before we sign off, I'd like to thank all our presenters and our sponsor, Siemens. I would also like to remind you that the webcast is available on demand on T&D World website for the next uh, within the next 48 hours. It will be available for one year. Thank you so much for attending, and have a wonderful remainder of your day. Goodbye.